So, I'm gonna turn this gun on. Turn this up to about seven. Now, our minimum hand weld, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you're doing a field seam, if you're doing a flashing or, or what have you, our requirement is maximum inch and a half. Now, hand welding is very different versus robotic welding. If you, if you saw our other videos, when we're doing hand welding, we are, this, we are the speed, this is my heat, and this is my compression. So we're trying to emulate that robot. We're not machines, we're not, we're not all perfect, we're gonna make mistakes. There's no right way or wrong way to get an inch and a half weld, as long as you get an inch and a half spec weld, that's all we care about. Now, I hand weld totally different than Dave, I do it the right way, obviously he probably does it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, right. Your first weld is going to be what's called an air dam, um, a pre-weld, whatever you want to call it. And your second weld is going to be the finish weld. So when I do my pre-weld, what I'm going to do, I'm going to address this seam. I'm going to take my nozzle and I'm going to stick it at a 90 degree angle to whatever I'm welding. And I'm going to run up probably past that angle change. And that's going to bring my pre-weld. When I do my finish weld, I'm going to turn my gun at about a 45 and I'm going to do my finish weld. But you will notice when I'm hand welding, whichever way I'm blowing at heat is always going to be at my roller. And also when I'm hand welding, if you'll notice, I'm going to pretty much keep my gun flat. I'm going to pretty much drag it along these bumpers on this gun. The more you raise your gun, you're going to do a couple things. You're going to blow that heat straight down rather than into the weld, and you're probably going to cause more wrinkles. What do you think? Should I start welding this? Please. All right. So here's my pre-weld. There's kind of the end of my nozzle. I'm going to back off my roller just a tad. Again, it's just nice, long, steady strokes past the end. I'm not going 100 miles an hour. I'm not white knuckling it. It's just nice, steady pressure. If you can see it, he has a, def uh, a definite line. You can see where his, where his weld is taking place. That's my free weld. Again, this is not a watertight weld. All this does, this is going to trap the air. And if you can see, there's my air damp. And you can check it. Like, yeah. Um, you, but you don't want a lot of holes or gaps in there. So that's going to allow air to escape, and it's going to affect how you do how you finish weld is. All right, so now I'm going to come back and do my finish weld. Again, you'll notice I'm going to turn my gun at about a 45. This is going to go a little quicker. And again, it's not a lot of pressure. It's not, I see guys doing this, it just makes me tired. And I'm not stopping here, I'm continuing past my seam. Again, he doesn't have his nozzle right next to his roller, so he's not pinching, pinching the heat. Obviously, in the colder weather, if you're working in Minnesota or something in the wintertime, you want to hold that back a little bit more so you give a preheat to the sheet, right? Right, I'm gonna pull, get to that good weld. And I'm continuing on. Now, here's what you don't wanna see on a, on a TPO or PVC weld. This is what I call stitching. A lot of guys back in the day used to do this. We were taught to do stitching. That's not really what you wanna do. Well, what's this called here, Dave? <laughs> it's, called, it's called being too hot. What is that black line on the outside of that seam? You're, you're, you're overheating the sheet. You're getting, we call it the cream coming out of the bottom. When you overheat it, it's not good. It's called bleed out. You really don't want to see bleed out on TPO. But if you look here, it's what I call stitching. So theoretically, in between each one of these little stitch marks, I could have a potential void. So if you remember when we showed you earlier, if you see somebody welding with a roller that has that rounded off edge like that, this is typically what happens. The guy's got his roller on edge, and that's how it, that, that gets rounded off. And that is a very, very hard habit to break. I still catch myself to this day doing that. And I see Dave is with me, and I have no idea what that is. This is a safety tip today. Always have a cup sling with you in case you know, your, your coffee gets heavy. And that is a lot of coffee. It is, it is. Um, I actually want to cut into the seam and I'm going to do um, a, a film tearing bond, a delamination test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut an inch wide, sample out of the seam, across the seam. I'm not pulling with the seam. 
And I would recommend it, an inch is about all you want to cut, because if I were to cut that about that wide, it would be very, very hard to pull that apart. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to grab it. I'm actually going to pull this apart. Now this takes a little oomph to do this. So you're, you want to emulate a machine, so you're not going to do a jerk. It's going to be a nice, steady pull. Something right along those lines like that. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a minimum of an inch to maximum of inch and a half delamination. So I'm right about an inch and a quarter, pushing an inch and a half. This is what we're looking for in our hand weld. This is, this is very important because when this is welded correctly, that full inch and a half, we're looking for a minimum inch, maximum inch and a half. This is what's holding the water out on your roof. If this is welded correctly, um, the seam, the weld is going to be actually stronger than the sheet. The biggest problem with hand welding, actually problem, the issue the, the, uh, with hand welding is we're not getting that minimum inch to maximum inch and a half weld. Anything under an inch, um, you're opening yourself to, to a lot of issues. Feel free to check out all the videos out there with tips and tricks. Dave? Please go to the GAF website to check for the care class near you so you too can do hands-on training.